Okay, um, seems time is up. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm not sure how many audiences connected from Europe, but just in case, um, guten Morgen and bonjour, and also good evening to Americas. Uh, this is Chunmin Kim from uh, Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology, Korea. I'm the host of today's APCTP colloquium. Um, it, it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce Professor uh, Takahiro Sagawa from the University of Tokyo. Uh, Professor Sagawa completed um, his PhD um, in physics um, in March 2011 from the University of Tokyo under uh, Professor uh, Masahito Ueda's mentorship. Um, immediately after his PhD, he had been uh, invited to his alma mater, Kyoto University, as an assistant professor. And his PhD thesis titled uh, Thermodynamics of Information Processing in Small Systems has been uh, published as a, a Springer thesis series in 2013. Um, spending almost two years in Kyoto, he came back to the University of Tokyo in January 2013 as an uh, associate professor in basic science. Uh, from 2015, uh, he got his current affiliation uh, at um, Department of Applied Physics um, in University of Tokyo, um, and then promoted to full professor um, in October 2020, three years ago. Um, um, out of uh, numerous national and international uh, honors, um, let me mention the so-called um, Young Boltzmann Medal, which was awarded uh, in 2013 at Statis 25 conference uh, by C3 Commission of um, IUPAP, International Union of Pure and Applied Physics. Um, Professor Sagawa is well-recognized theoretical physicist working on non-equilibrium statistic mechanics, especially in small uh, fluctuating systems, and quantum measurement, control, and information theory in open systems. Now, as a, a full professor, he is no more a rising sun because we already saw the daybreak. Uh, he has been uh, still uh, very active in non-equilibrium information processing and feedback control with uh, colloidal particles and macromolecules such as molecular motors and open quantum systems such as quantum dots. Recently, uh, last year actually, he also published a volume in Springer Briefs in Mathematical Physics titled Entropy, Divergence, and majorization in classical and quantum thermodynamics. Okay, now the floor is yours, Takahiro. Okay, thank you very much for your introduction. And I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk in this uh, program. So it's my great honor to uh, talk in this uh, opportunity. Um, let me share the screen. Okay, so can you see this? Yep, very good. Okay, so the today's talk title is on the existence of complete thermodynamic potentials uh, based on a resource theoretic approach. So this is about a uh, foundation of thermodynamics based on a quantum theoretic, a quantum information theoretic approach called a resource theory of thermodynamics. So my background is statistical physics and quantum information theory. So I, I, I have been working on a kind of a cross region of these two fields. And today's talk is more quantum information based approach to thermodynamics. Okay, so this is the outline of today's talk. So let me start from a general introduction to this field including quantum information theory and statistical physics. And next I will talk about uh, my first main result that is about the quantum thermodynamics of interacting many body systems. And the part two of my talk is about quantum thermodynamics of 
a created catalytic state. Uh, there is a, some concept called catalyst in uh, resource theory of thermodynamics. And I will talk about some condition for the state conversion at small scale thermodynamics. Okay, so let me start from the introduction. So uh, the very general background of this work is some dynamics. As you know, entropy or the free energy provides a um, precise characterization of state compatibility because macroscopic equilibrium states. Here, the important point is that we have a complete characterization of state conversion in a necessary and sufficient manner. So that is, in macroscopic equilibrium thermodynamics, uh, a state conversion is possible if and only if um, the entropy increases or the free energy decreases. So this is this uh, necessary and sufficient characterization of state of compatibility is a very characteristic of conventional thermodynamics. And this has been also formalized in a rigorous mathematics manner. So by Leap and Inkperson in this paper. So the question is, does such a complete thermodynamic potential exist in out of equilibrium and fully quantum situations? So- uh, Elementary so, question. Sorry? Elementary question. How can I understand the second condition? Uh, or, uh, uh, or, okay, sorry, yeah. So delta is larger than zero equal double work is larger than delta is. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. mean, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. sorry, yeah. 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 So th this is for equilibrium thermodynamics. So the state compatibility is characterized for the macroscopic equilibrium transition. So now the question is, how can we extend this kind of characterization of state compatibility, introducing some free energy or some entropy uh, in out of equilibrium and quantum situations? So th that is my question. Okay. So. Also, another background of some dynamics, modern some dynamics, is some ex experimental technologies. So there are various experimental platforms for small-scale some dynamics. For example, in the classical regime, so biomolecules or coidal particles are a very important platform to do um, some dynamic experiments in small and fluctuating systems. And also in the quantum regime, there are many interesting <laughs> platforms like trapped ions, superconducting qubits, and single electrons, and NMRs, and so on. In these systems, <laughs> we can observe the effect of uh, quantum fluctuations as well as thermal fluctuations. So we have uh, some experimental motivations to extend the framework of some dynamics to the quantum regime. And there are several approaches several theoretical approaches to a modern thermodynamics. One approach is based on so-called stochastic thermodynamics or thermodynamics of information that we call information thermodynamics. So this approach is based on uh, statistical physics and it stems back to the discovery of the fluctuation theorem in 1990s. So I have been working on this approach for a long time from my PhD. <laughs> and PhD from when I was a PhD student. And, and also there is a, another a more recent approach to this modern thermodynamics that is called the resource theory of thermodynamics. So this is more based on quantum information theory. And this is a very active area of research in this decade. So this is more mathematical and a kind of purely information theoretical approach to some dynamics, and that is um, very different from uh, stochastic some dynamics. And today I will focus on this second approach to some dynamics based on quantum information theory. So this is today's main topic. And let me take this opportunity to advertise my recent textbook. So that has uh, mentioned my professor Kim. So th this is a, a textbook about resource theory of thermodynamics, also uh, a little bit about stochastic thermodynamics. So it's about the general properties, general mathematical properties of entropy and divergence. Divergence is uh, some relative entropy and majorization in both the classical and quantum regimes. 
So yeah, and this is uh, this is this is written in a very mathematical style. So we have some definitions and theorem and proofs like that. So so you can see a draft in this archive uh, number, uh, but but this this is a draft. So there are still several typos. So I, I hope those are fixed in this published version. Okay, so let me go to the uh, introduction to resource theory thermodynamics. So what is resource theory? So resource theory is an in information theoretic framework to quantify useful resources. So useful resources can be, for example, entanglement or quantum coherence, or in this context, work for the free energy. So it, in resource theoretic approach, it is crucial to identify what are, what are free states and what are free operations. So free states mean that we can uh, prepare uh, those states without any cost. And free operations mean that uh, we can operate uh, those kind of operations uh, without any cost again. So those uh, free states and free operations are important to define a resource theory. So the <laughs> most uh, famous resource theory is, I think, a resource theory of thermodynamics. So this is a purely quantum information theoretic concept. And the resource is entanglement, of course, in this case. And free states are separable states that are supposed to uh, be able to prepare uh, without any cost, because th that are a kind of trivial states, and we and the free operations are in this situation uh, local operations and classical communication that is called ROCC. So this does not increase the entanglement. So in that sense, the free operations does not increase the amount of resource in this case, and. Uh, so in the case of thermodynamics, the resource is work or the free energy, and the free states are given states or thermal equilibrium states. So, and the free operations are relaxation processes because in thermodynamics, we don't need any cost to make some systems relaxed to the thermal equilibrium state. So, and also an important point is that in this free operation, uh, the free energy does not increase. So this is parallel to the uh, property of entanglement uh, in which uh, we cannot increase the amount of entanglement by the free operation. So there are some similarities because, uh, between the resource theory of entanglement and the resource theory of some dynamics. And <laughs> this similarity is not just uh, intuitive, but there is some mathematical correspondence between the entanglement theory and some dynamics. So, we can imagine that there is a, some uh, completely entangled state, that is a bare state. And if you trace out one of two qubits of the entangled state, and then the remaining state uh, qubit is in a completely mixed state. That is, for example, the mix, uh, complete mixture of the zero, zero, and one, uh, zero state and one state. On the, on the other hand, in some dynamics, so the completely mixed state is a kind of a thermal equilibrium state at infinite temperature. So in that sense, uh, the resource theory of, theory of entanglement is a, is, uh, is, uh, is a kind of parallel to the resource theory of uh, thermodynamics at infinite temperature. So apparently, entanglement and thermodynamics are very different, but uh, we focus on some mathematical structure. There is some correspondence between entanglement and thermodynamics. Of, co of course, there is some difference between these two. So like the erosive, the direction of state conversion is opposite in the entanglement and thermodynamics theory. But, but anyway, so there is a very similar mathematical structures between entanglement and thermodynamics at infinite temperature. So in that sense, the resource theory of thermodynamics is a kind of finite dimension, a finite temperature extension of uh, entanglement theory. So because 
uh, in some dynamics, it is crucial to this kind of biased population. So that represents the finite temperature state. So uh, in that sense, there is some similarity, but the resource theory of some dynamics is a more general uh, mathematical framework uh, to incorporate the finite temperature effect. Okay, so there are many resource theories uh, in uh, like entanglement and some dynamics. And also there is a resource theory of coherence. And also there is a resource theory of so-called asymmetry. And also there is a general resource theory. This is a very uh, general mathematical framework based on convex analysis or something like that. But anyway, today I will focus on the resource theory of thermodynamics in this one. Okay, so now we are going to the formulation of resource theory of thermodynamics. So first of all, this is a general formulation of non-unitary dynamics of open quantum systems. So here, here we have some system S. This is a target system of our theory. And there is a heat bus. Uh, that is also a quantum system. And we perform a unitary <laughs> evolution on the composite system, uh, system on the bus. And then we trace out the bus degree of freedom. Uh, this is represented by, represented by this partial trace. Then the <laughs> mapping from the initial state of the system to the final state of, of the system is uh, non-unitary evolution. So this is called a CPTP map, completely positive and trace preserving map. And this is uh, the most general class of non-unitary dynamics in quantum systems. Now we focus on the case of thermodynamics. So, and we need to specify what is the thermodynamic, thermodynamically meaningful non-unitary dynamics. One naive uh, definition is that in thermodynamics, the given state that is a canonical ensemble it does not change under the free relaxation. So we can adopt this relation as a definition of the subdynamically meaningful map that is called the Gibbs preserving map. Because of course in physical systems, if you have some summer state and if you have some free relaxation, then the state uh, doesn't change at all. So then uh, um, we can specify uh, the class of general class of non-unitary dynamics by adding this condition that it's a gives preserving condition. So this is one definition of the thermodynamic, thermodynamically meaningful uh, uh, time evolution. And also there is a slightly different uh, class of uh, thermodynamically meaningful operations that is called summer operations. So in this case, uh, we just require that the uh, initial state of the heat bus is in the Gibbs state of the heat bus itself. And also we add additional condition about the unitary that is commutable with the sum of system Hamiltonian and the bus Hamiltonian. So in general, we, of course, we have some interaction Hamiltonian, but this condition implies that the unitary uh, commutes with uh, the sum of Hamiltonians without including the interaction Hamiltonian. So this is a stronger condition than the ordinary energy conservation. So uh, this means that uh, this is a, this represents a, some spirit of resource theory because the sum of the system energy and the uh, bus energy are always is always conserved. So this means that the energy is kind of resource. And, and this is, Again, this is a stronger condition than the ordinary energy conservation. So not all physical systems uh, satisfy this condition. But there are uh, some uh, typical examples to have this condition. One uh, model, or important model is called the James Cummings model at the resonant condition. So in this model, we have um, exact uh, commut uh, commutation ratio like this. And another more broad class of dynamics that satisfy this uh, condition is the counter master equation under the rotating wave approximation. In this case, 
So we can neglect the effect of some coherence by considering the Markov approximation or something like that. So at least, at least in a long time region compared to some uh, very, uh, uh, compared to the time scale of the heat bus of the system, we can expect that this condition is satisfied at least approximately. So now let me mention uh, the relationship between the Gibbs preserving maps and summer operations. It is not that, yes. Oh, I think I still I didn't understand very good this part. So what is you? So what why? So I think I didn't understand why. So H S plus H B is the total Hamiltonian of this system. Yeah. What is you? You it's a dynamics, the internal dynamics of the total system. Then exponential i H S plus H B time integral. Uh, you mean plus, plus interaction Hamiltonian in general. Uh, interaction yeah, uh, yeah. between so, uh pass and system yeah huh. yeah yeah so this condition is stronger than the energy conservation because we don't have the uh, interaction hamiltonian here but you should include the interaction so uh, yeah thank you yeah so so th this is a strong condition. So this is satisfies only in these uh, systems, I think. Okay, and so, yeah, it is known that some operations are always gives preserving maps, but the converse is not always true. So because uh, from this commutation relation, so the some operations cannot create the energy coherence between energy agent states. On the other hand, Gibbs preserving map can create some energy coherence between energy eigenstates. So an example is uh, given in this uh, paper. So in Gibbs preserving map, uh, it is possible to convert the energy eigenstate one to its superposition plus state, but this is prohibited in summer operations. But anyway, uh, we have two classes of some dynamically meaningful operations in resource theory of some dynamics, and the Gibbs preserving map is more general or more broad class of <laughs> operations. Okay, so another important uh, concept in resource theory of some dynamics is a single shot work extraction. So we can co uh, consider some work extraction from a system. For example, here is a single molecular gas and we can expand the barrier. And then we can extract, for example, the KT log two of work from this expansion. In stochastic thermodynamics formulation, the work, the work value is fluctuating and it is a kind of stochastic uh, quantity. On the other hand, in a typical resource theory setup, we suppose that the work is uh, always a definite quantity. It is non-random or non-stochastic quantity. So for example, in this case, the initial state of the uh, battery, battery starts the work value. In this case, in this case, this is supposed to be a qubit. And in the initial state, uh, the battery state is in the ground state. And after the work extraction, the state of the battery is always in the excited state with probability one. So this excludes the possibility of uh, the fluctuating work because we have always uh, the uh, work value double by unit probability. So- I'm sorry, um, yes. before too late. Uh, there was a question from the audience. Um, yeah. In the previous slide um, regarding uh, GPM, the Gibbs preserving map, yeah. uh, do you assume that the coupling between that bath and the system? Yeah. I mean, weak coupling limit? That was the uh, question. Uh, physically, in the weak coupling limit, this is justified. This is justified. But mm -hmm. in general, so this is a mathematical condition. So we don't require any uh, condition about the coupling. Okay. okay. So only this condition is a mathematical definition of the gives preserving maps. Okay. So, Does yeah. that answer your question, Professor No? Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is a this is called a single shot scenario of the work extraction, and this is also physically natural because um, this means that we exclude the entropic condition, entropic contribution from the work stretch that is the battery. So the, in some dynamics, it is supposed that the work is a purely mechanical quantity, so without any entropy. So this represents that spirit of uh, some dynamics. And it, it was found that in this single shot scenario, in small scale thermodynamics, we have some exotic second law like inequalities in the work extraction and the work investment. In equilibrium thermodynamics, of course, we always have a single free energy or a single entropy value. But in this single shot scenario in a small system, so we have a different second laws. Uh, in this direction and in the opposite direction. So first we consider the situation that we start from the given state and we end up with some non-equilibrium state. And we need to invest some work to create the non-equilibrium state. And th that work value is bounded by the uh, Rennie infinite entropy. This is also Rennie max entropy given by this definition. So. The detail of this definition is not very important in this talk, but anyway, we have some uh, family of rainy entropies, rainy divergences, uh, and this is uh, the maximum one in the family of rainy divergences. And uh, rho is the non-equilibrium state, and rho z is the given state. So this is our first uh, second row like inequality. And in the opposite direction, we start with uh, some non-equilibrium state, uh, and we end up with uh, the given state. And during this process, we can extract the work uh, and that is bounded by the Rennie zero entropy or Rennie minimum entropy. So again, the definition is this, uh, P of rho is a projection to the support of the density operator rho. But anyway, so we have some minimum of the Rennie divergence family and uh, the work value, work extraction is bounded by by the Rennie zero entropy. So we have different um, entropies in the work uh, investment uh, situation and the work extraction situation. Okay, so, so now uh, our main question um, comes up here because uh, we have different uh, entropies in these directions. So this means that the reversibility is not relevant to this single shot small scale thermodynamics because in macroscopic thermodynamics, uh, the uh, free energies are the same in this direction and in the opposite direction. So if we make a cycle in conventional thermodynamics, we cannot extract any work or we don't need to invest any work. And this is just a cycle and everything, go back to the, everything goes back to the original situation. But in this case, uh, even when we uh, make a simple cycle starting from a given state and we again end up with a given state, mm -hmm. we need to invest uh, a certain amount of work that is given by the difference of the Rennie infinite entropy and Rennie zero entropy. So this means that uh, uh, reversibility is broken because yeah, just a cycle requires a uh, positive amount of work. So in other words, uh, we don't have a single complete summoning potential except for equilibrium transitions. So now our question is, is it still possible to have a single summoning potential if something that completely characterizes state compatibility out of equilibrium and fully quantum situations. So in general, this is impossible as shown here, but by considering some physically relevant situations, uh, we expect that it is possible to recover some uh, single thermodynamic -like potential, uh, even, in, even in the case of a non-equilibrium and quantum systems. And there are two answers. Uh, in our works. The first answer is take, we can take the asymptotic or macroscopic limit of the system 
Uh, that is a kind of we, we, uh, kind of a macroscopic thermal dynamic situation, and uh, but we need some condition that the state is spatially ergodic and the Hamiltonian is local and translation invariant. So this is a topic of part one. And another answer is that we can consider the create uh, uh, concept called the created catalytic state conversion. So there is a uh, concept catalyst. Uh, in resource theory, and we allow a correlation between the system and the catalyst. We uh, again have a um, single thermodynamic potential, even in the we, even without taking the thermodynamic limit, and uh, when we consider the small scale thermodynamics. So this is a topic of part two of this talk. Mm. That's sure. Yeah. <laughs> follow for me. I mean, in the previous page. Yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned yes, that yeah. Yeah, if you define, I don't know how to define the free energy and free energy doesn't change it. So what does it mean? Oh sorry. Could can, you can you yeah, I mean in, in this part, so yeah. in, in the in the deep state and non equilibrium state, the state conversion case, you mentioned the free energy doesn't change it. So what does it mean? Oh, you mean in conventional case? Yeah, yeah, in conversion, ah. in this conversion case. Yeah, so in, how uh, can you define? Yeah. yeah. In conventional case, so we are allowed only the uh, equilibrium transition. So we start with a given state and we end up with another given state. And then we need to invest some work that is uh, given by the free energy difference. And again, we start from this another given state to, uh, and we end up with this given state, and we our work extraction is uh, precisely given by the minus of the work in investment. Investment. So by doing this cycle, so the work investment and work extractions are cancelled with each other exactly. So we don't need any energy, uh, or we can't extract any energy from this. Ah, uh, in one cycle. Yeah, by I one. Cycle, yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. But in this case, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. In, in this case, yeah. Uh, so we have a gap between the S infinity and S zero. So we need a uh, positive amount of work by uh, just a simple cycle. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and yeah. I'd like to mention that uh, in both two uh, cases, the relevant summoning potential is given by the ordinary uh, relative entropy. That is also called the KL divergence in information theory context. Okay, so let me go to the part one of this talk. That is a quantum thermodynamics of interacting in many body systems. Okay, so th this is a collaborating work when I visited Caltech, this is all, already five years ago, and uh, the collaborators are uh, Fernando Brandau and Philip Feist and Kotaro Kato and Hiroshi Nagaoka, he's in Japan. So yeah, uh, this work was published in these two papers. Okay, so let me start from a very rough sketch of our result. What we have proved is the existence of a thermodynamic potential that completely characterizes state compatibility for a broad class of interacting quantum many body systems. Many body means some macros macroscopic systems with some physically reasonable assumptions that is the uh, ergodicity and the local interaction Hamiltonian, even for out of equilibrium and fully quantum situations. As I will show, Later, so the, our main mathematical technique is based on quantum hypothesis test. Okay, so let me start from our, our basic setup of this research. So we consider many body spin system or lattice in any special dimension. So this is not restricted to one dimension, but we can consider any uh, dimension, one or two or three. And thus our state, uh, it's, it's supposed to be spatially ergodic. So th this is a different concept of uh, ordinary temporal ergodicity, but this is an uh, ergodicity in space. So this means that the fluctuation of any macroscopic observable, that is a 
for, uh, for example, the total magnetization, total magnetization vanishes in the macroscopic limit. So in other words, the uh, spatial average of a local uh, observable equals the ensemble average of that observable. So this is similar to the ordinary temporal ergodicity that implies that the time average equals the uh, ensemble average. But now we have uh, some condition about the space, spatial average equals the, equals the uh, uh, ensemble average. So physically, this means that any macroscopic observable has a definite value. So there is no phase coexistence. So this is a physical meaning of the spatial ergodicity. So um, for example, in the ferromagnetic region, so we have uh, some magnetic domain up and down. In that case, the spatial average does not match the ensemble average because we have some uh, domain of all up state and all down state, for example. So we exclude that kind of phase coexistence and we can just consider the, a pure thermodynamic phase. And another assumption is that the Hamiltonian is interacting, uh, uh, Hamiltonian is interacting, but that is local and translation invariant. And it has some given state or Z. Then, and some uh, proper definition of um, asymptotic, asymptotic limit given by uh, information spectrum that I will talk later. But uh, anyway, there, there is some uh, definition uh, to properly take the asymptotic limit of many body systems. And um, we can show that the Rennie zero entropy and Rennie infinite entropy are both equal to the Rennie one entropy. That is nothing but KL divergence. This, this is also called the relative entropy and defined like this. So by, sorry, by this uh, property in the macroscopic, macroscopic limit in this setup. So Rennie zero entropy and Rennie infinity entropy are both equal to the uh, to the air divergence. So the work investment and the work extraction are just completely the same in that situation in the macroscopic limit. So we can recover the reversibility. Okay, so so this is our main result and we can uh, reflect it in terms of the uh, work and the uh, free energy free energy more explicitly so we can define the free energy of the the state rho uh, based on the k divergence and this f is a free an equilibrium free energy so and by using this non equilibrium free energy so the, we can say our statement that rho can be asymptotically converted into rho prime by a gibbs preserving map with the work cost w if and only if uh, w is greater than or equals the uh, free energy difference. So this is a um, complete characterization of state compatibility uh, in a necessary and sufficient manner. Um, Question? Yes. What do you mean asymptotically converted? Oh, yeah. Uh, there is a map between, uh, there is a Gibbs preserving map that converts state row to row prime. Uh. So yeah. asymptotic converted means gives freeze a remake map. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So this is a statement about the existence of some gives preserving map, at least asymptotically. So from row to row prime. So th this is a necessary and sufficient characterization. So this is a this is parallel to the conventional subdynamic. Uh, characterization that is given by the entropy increase and or the free energy decrease. So this, this is basically a, a statement about the Gibbs preserving map. But I would like to note that um, the Gibbs preserving map can be replaced by a summer operation, even in a fully quantum case, uh, if uh, we allow some eye of a small amount of quantum coherence. So yeah, and th this is also a technical result, but the uh, important point is that uh, we can even replace the Gibbs preserving map to the summer operations in this uh, formulation. 
So very roughly speaking, we can show the emergence of a sublime, complete sublime potential for characterization of state compatibility in the macroscopic limit. So also, yeah, then I have prepared some technical slides to uh, clarify the meaning of asymptotic limit or something like that. So uh, I'm not sure if as the audience uh, are interested in this uh, technical aspect, but uh, let me just go through what is the precise mathematical formulations. So first, we need to the proper asymptotic limit or any zero entropy and any infinite entropy. In the case of KL divergence, this is just simple and just we can take the limit of n goes to infinity. But uh, it is known that the Rennie zero entropy and Rennie infinite entropy have a strong singularities, especially the Rennie zero entropy ha has strong singularity. So it, 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 it is uh, important to uh, clarify what is a proper uh, asymptotic limit. So a naive uh, n goes to infinity limit fails, and instead, so we need to introduce a concept called a smooth divergences. So th this is, for example, this is a Rennie divergence, F S in infinity divergence. And we smooth uh, this quantity with respect to the first argument. So this is uh, the minimum over the uh, states that is epsilon close to the original state rho. So this is kind of smoothing about the non-equilibrium state in this case, rho. And also we can make the smoothing of the uh, Rennie zero divergence. Then uh, the trick is that we take the limit soup of Rennie infinite uh, entropy, and then we take the smoothing zero limit. And also in the case of the Rennie zero entropy, we first take the limit inf and then take the uh, smoothing it uh, goes to zero limit. So we can't exchange uh, the order of this, uh, order of these limits. So this is very mathematical, but we need to be careful about uh, the uh, limit of Rennie zero and Rennie infinite entropies. And also, Correspondingly, we need to precisely define what is uh, the state conversion in the asymptotic region. So we support that the give, uh, and this this is a second argument of the entropy, and we support that the give state doesn't uh, change exactly in Gibbs preserving map. <laughs> so yeah, and this is a kind of physically natural assumption because in the summer equilibrium state, the given state is conserved uh, exactly. On the other hand, we allow some error in the um, state of conversion of non-equilibrium state, and, and we suppose that uh, the error is uh, convergent to zero uh, if we make the system size larger and larger. So th this is our uh, setup of asymptotic state compatibility. Uh, so that is the state of conversion is allowed to include some error, but that vanishes into some dynamic limit. Uh, but the given state should be conserved exactly in this formation. And this definition is uh, completely, uh, completely consistent with uh, this technical definition of the asymptotic limit of entropy. And it is known that uh, this kind of uh, asymptotic limit gives a complete characterization of uh, state conversion uh, in this definition of asymptotic state of conversion. And if uh, the uh, max entropy and any, uh, the mini entropy are the same. so. So this is a general uh, statement about the state of conversion and the entropy increase. So then uh, our goal is uh, to show the Rennie max entropy and Rennie zero entropy indeed collapse to a single value in the under the assumption of zero density and the uh, local interaction. Sorry, uh, another yes. question from audience. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, could you remind us of the definition of sigma n and rho n? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I maybe I. Uh, yeah. So in this setup, we consider very general uh, two sequences of uh, state rho and sigma. In some dynamic setting, sigma is just a given state, and rho is a non-trivial state. But uh, for mathematical generality, we just assume that there are two, two expanding sequence of states on a lattice. So this is an lattice side, and the rho n is some general state, and sigma n is also some general state. All right, thank you. So also, yeah, also there are some mathematical details about the lattice, but anyway, so our theorem is uh, this. So uh, this S under bar and S upper bar is, are just a uh, asymptotic limit of any zero divergence and any infinite divergence. And both goes to uh, the any any one divergence in the asymptotic limit and any diver one divergence is just a K divergence or the relative edge. And for this quantity, the asymptotic limit is just just a rim, limit. So there is no uh, complicated uh, smoothing or something. So so th this is what we have exactly proved. So the any zero divergence and any infinite divergence goes to the K divergence. Uh, in the asymptotic limit. And let me also briefly mention the mathematical background of the proof. So uh, the, our basic idea is called the quantum hypothesis testing. So this, this is very different from thermodynamics apparently, but it is known that uh, some large deviation behavior of uh, the quantum hypothesis testing is related to the any zero entropy and any infinite entropy. So, and what we have exactly proved in this work is so-called quantum Stein's lemma that uh, characterizes the large deviation property of uh, the uh, of the quantum hypothesis testing that is uh, corresponding to the uh, KL divergence if we assume the ergodicity or something like that. So th this is uh, meaningful without considering some dynamics. And this is uh, some general, generalized uh, uh, stand lemma that is important uh, thoroughly in the community of quantum information theory. And yeah, also, Ashwan, uh, yes. Yeah. Let me try to yeah. have some feeling. In the previous page, how the special ergodicity yeah. plays a role in proving, I mean, some asymptotic yeah. result? Or... Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, basic state, our basic statement is like this. So, we assume the special ergodicity of state role and the uh, interaction Hamiltonian is local and translation invariant. So, yeah, and under these conditions, we have proved that uh, in the asymptotic limit, so the any zero entropy and any infinite entropy are both equal to the uh, uh, K divergence. Yeah, then how, what is the role of in this proof, proof what is the role of special ergodicity? Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's a complicated part of this uh, work. So yeah, yeah, it, it is in information theory. Even in the classical case, there's a theorem called the Shannon Macmillan theorem. So it it is, for example, maybe in the classical case we can find that theorem in the Carver Thomas textbook. So it says that the uh, if the State in the case of the classical case, the if the probability distribution is special ergodic, then uh, then the uh, then some large deviation property satisfies uh, uh, something like this. So th that is a shannon macmillan theorem. So uh, yeah, so and is that 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 is well known in the classical information theory, uh, where the ergodicity is still very important. 
So, and, and our theorem is to generalize it to the quantum case. And also, uh, the interacting, that interacting Hamiltonian case. So, so maybe this history is, maybe this history is relevant to your question. So, in the classical case, the strange lemma or asymptotic equipartition property is very relevant. And um, in this theorem, so the ergodicity is important to get some uh, Shannon Macmillan theorem. So, yeah, also uh, the most uh, important case is the uh, IID case. IID is a uh, identical and independently distributed uh, situation. And th this is a starting point of the information theory. And we can generalize this IID situation to the ergodic situation. And th that was done in the 20th century in uh, some uh, information theory community. And then in after that, so people tried to generate uh, the Stein's lemma or some ergodic property to the quantum regime. And here, and Pets and Ogawa and Nagaoka proved uh, the quantum uh, Stein's lemma for the IID case. And after that, uh, these people generate it to the uh, ergodic situation. So, but, but the, in this case, the reference Hamiltonian is still not interacting. So, what, what we have proved is that uh, we have generalized to the reference state to an interacting Gibbs Hamilton Gibbs state. So th that means that our uh, result is truly interacting under many body situations. Will you it's remind a... me of Stein's lemma? What does it mean? Uh, yeah, Stein's lemma is uh, basically this. Uh, Stein's lemma is uh, mathematically equivalent to this one. So, I mean, Mathematically, Stein's lemma is exactly the same as this. So, but in the in the quantum information community, it is known as a in a different way. So that is a, a property of the quantum hypothesis test. Okay. What? Yeah. What does it mean? Quantum hypothesis testing. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So sorry, I, I skipped it. So let me explain that. The quantum hypothesis testing is something, uh, some task that distinguishes two states, rho and sigma, and rho is a kind of some uh, neural hypothesis. And the, uh, the, our task is to minimize the error probability of the second kind that is given by uh, this quantity. And Q is some measurement operator while keeping uh, the, uh, the probability. Uh, it, uh, the first probability is bounded by some constant eta. So uh, essentially, this is a task to minimize some error for the uh, state distinguishment of two states. And the hypothesis testing, and uh, this is called the hypothesis testing divergence, but essentially, this is a kind of large deviation property of uh, the error probability, this one. So uh, if we take some asymptotic limit, this error probability have some exponential behavior. And that exponential term is called the hypothesis testing divergence. And in the quantum stains lemma, so that uh, exponential part uh, converges to the K divergence. So this is uh, stains lemma. Th th this form of uh, uh, theorem is completely is the same also in the classical regime, but it's a, uh, yeah, hypothesis testing is just is about the distinguishment of two probability distributions or two quantum states, and uh, its error probability ha has some large deviation property like this, and that large deviation term converges to the KL divergence. So that is the essence of the Stein's lemma. And the form is also the same as in the quantum region. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, there are so many technical terms. So, and yeah. Okay, so and this is summary of part one. So we have proved that in, in, the, in terms of thermodynamics, we have proved the existence of a complete thermodynamic potential. Uh, for a broad class of quantum spin systems. 
out of equilibrium. And state is spatially ergodic and the Hamiltonian is local and translation invariant. And this applies to any spatial dimension. And the proof is based on the concept of information spectrum. That is a way to take the asymptotic limit. And we have proved that general quantum stains them beyond the IID situation. So I think this uh, is a step towards a uh, resource theory of interacting and truly many body systems beyond the IID situation. But some open problems are, for example, what does the resource theory tell about the uh, ergodicity breaking case, like the many body localization or spin glass or something like that? Okay, so this is the first part. So, do you have any... one part? Yeah, one question. Sorry for this part. So, yeah. I just want to figure out some storyline. Yeah. So, previously, you mentioned that for this, I mean, cycle between Gibbs state to non equilibrium state, to you for work calculation, you increase some entropy yeah. relative or some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, rainy and relatively rainy entropy or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. that kind of concept. Now you introduce some eff effective potential or some thermodynamic potential F. What what is the difference between that? So will you mention uh, again? Yes. In the difference from entropy, entropy, yeah. Entropy, yeah, entropy construction to this pre energy like constructions. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. They are essentially the same. So I mean, sorry, I used the terminology very, you know, very sloppy. Right? So, so in thermodynamics, the relative relative entropy is basically the free energy. So I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe this is our standard relation in to connect the KL divergence that is the relative entropy and the free energy of the state. So, so this is relative entropy and the re reference state is given by the given state. And in that case, the free energy is um, given by the KL divergence, essentially the KL divergence. And this F is just our equilibrium free energy. So this uh, kind of uh, expression is very uh, common. And this is also relevant to the uh, rainy zero and infinite di uh, divergences. I mean, if uh, free energy of, for example, F infinity is defined as a S infinity, and F zero is defined by S zero, something like that. So yeah, in what uh, uh, essentially, so the free energy is just a uh, divergence or the relative entropy. So in this work. As far as I understand, you you considered some equilibrium limit, or it, it, it's more than the equilibrium limit. Oh, sorry, could you say that? So, as far as as far as I understand, the the Stein formula, the S zero and relative and S infinity relative equal yeah. relative entropy at relation. You, I mean, prove some interacting local work. Such I mean ergodic situation, especially that, that proof. So that's the equilibrium limit or some more than that. Oh, uh, you mean this one? Yeah, this yeah. This one is not equilibrium limit. So the special ergodicity is just the uh, condition about the uh, uh, no phase coexistence in physics term. So this can be a very non equilibrium state. So, and this condition says that even when the state is out of equilibrium, but just a, a special ergodic state, then it has a single thermodynamic potential in your macroscopic limit. So th that's a message of this result. Okay. Uh, does it make sense? <laughs> I'm not in a position to mention that. But anyway, thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, so about that point, so this S0 and the S infinity are the same only in the equilibrium limit, in the 
exact sense. I mean, in the small system. But if we take the asymptotic limit, that is a macroscopic limit, then even when rho is completely out of equilibrium, we still have the situation that S0 and S infinity both collapse to the KL divergence. So that, that, that is our theory. I see, yeah, thank you. Okay, so then now I'm going to the second part. So th this is shorter than the first part. So, okay, so another situation to get a single summary potential is a so-called uh, catalytic state uh, conversion. So let, let me start with what is catalyst? So in resource theory, uh, theory of thermodynamics, uh, there is a a system called a catalyst uh, that can be interacting with the system. Mm -hmm. But in the final state, the catalyst state exactly goes back to the initial one. So this, this is very similar to our catalyst in chemistry. So then we call this as a catalyst. Mm -hmm. So this, this uh, is a, uh, this uh, apparently this seems to be a trivial, but trivial situation, but uh, Indeed, the attachment of a catalyst makes the um, state of combat compatibility very non-trivial. So that is uh, what I will talk in this second part. So also, I would like to mention that uh, the catalyst is uh, also thermodynamically motivated because in conventional thermodynamics, it should be always allowed to add an additional system without remaining any effect on the outside world. So this is the original spirit of thermodynamics. And this catalyst is completely consistent with that uh, idea in thermodynamics. Okay, so there are several known results in uh, catalytic state conversion. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, the catalyst is completely Exact, I mean, the initial state of the catalyst and its final state are completely the same without allowing any error. Then the state compatibility is still very complicated as shown in these papers. So the necessary and sufficient condition for the state of conversion from row to row prime is characterized by the infinite family of the Rene divergences, mm -hmm. including the negative Rene entropies. So not only zero and infinity, but we have all real numbers about, on, about this alpha. So this is a very complicated situation. And there is no single summary potential. On the other hand, there is an uh, opposite extreme situation that uh, we allow, if we allow some error in the catalyst state, even when it is very small, uh, the state of compatibility becomes uh, trivial. So that, that is known as an embezzling phenomenon in resource theory. So this is a bit counterintuitive, but it is a very established theorem in resource theory. So this says that even when there is a very small amount of error in the catalyst state, the resource theory becomes uh, completely trivial. So now we are interested in the intermediate regime between these two. Uh, extreme cases. The exact catalyst case is uh, very complicated, still very complicated. And the uh, catalyst with some error becomes trivial. So we are interested in the intermediate regime and we hope there is, we expect there is uh, some non-trivial characterization, not trivial, but simple characterization of state compatibility. So our idea is to introduce the correlation between the system and the catalyst in the final state. So, so we do not allow any error about the catalyst state in the initial and final state, but we allow a small amount of correlation between the system and the catalyst state in the final state. Then it was conjectured that uh, the necessary and sufficient condition of state compatibility is given only by the KL divergence in this setup. So, and the classical case was proved in this PRX paper by Mura 
uh, and we have proved the uh, quantum case by using a completely different technique from the classical situation. So this is the main result of this second part. Okay, so this is a, a precise statement of the main theorem. So again, we have the a free energy based on the KL divergence. And uh, we start with the system and the catalyst and the final state is the system and the catalyst and the marginal state of the catalyst is completely the same as the initial one. And, uh, but there's some uh, correlation between the system and the catalyst that can be arbitrarily small in the final state. And we have shown that the free energy is decreased uh, if and only if there exists uh, a state transformation given by this. So this is our main theorem. So this is a sketch of the proof. I don't go into the details, but the main idea is that so the catalyst state can be very huge. So and we uh, prepare a very large catalyst state and we apply the quantum Stendlem again here to the uh, composite system and the system and the catalyst. In this setup, the system is a small system, like in a usual quantum sum dynamic setup, but the catalyst can be huge. So we can apply the asymptotic theory, like the quantum stains lemma to the composite system, to the, stain, uh, to the system and the catalyst. So this is the idea of the proof. And we have also considered the work investment situation. So uh, yeah, we can prepare some work thread here. And we suppose that there's no correlation between the work thread and the system in the final state. Then we again have the necessary and sufficient condition that the uh, row can be converted into the row prime state. If and only if the work investment is larger than or equals to the free energy difference. Okay, so this is summary part two. So there was a conjecture that uh, catalyst state catalytic state conversion is characterized by a single thermodynamic potential given by the KL divergence. If an actually small amount of correlation is allowed in the uh, final state between the catalyst and the system, and we have proved the quantum case based on the asymptotic theory, especially the quantum stain lemma, because the catalyst state can be very huge. And our result is also applicable to more general state conversion, rho sigma to rho prime sigma prime, and various resource theories in which the KL divergence asymptotically emerges, not restricted to the sum dynamic resource theory. Also, okay, so this is a final discussion. Uh, slide. So first, wh why resource theory is interesting in terms of thermal dynamics? Mm. Uh, one, one side, uh, it is a very mathematically clean and universal framework to characterize state compatibility, not restricted to the thermal dynamics. But um, idea is that thermal dynamics is a resource theory from the beginning because we are uh, we care about some uh, free energy or the work or the state conversion. So uh, there's a very uh, natural consistency because between the resource theory framework and the sound dynamics framework. And another question is why the pair divergence emerges so frequently? So one, I, one answer can be like that the proper divergence divergence in the asymptotic limit is a KL divergence. So in many situations, we have many entropies or divergences like the KL divergence or, uh, or the Rennie divergence. So, but uh, Rennie zero and Rennie infinity divergence converge to, to the KL divergence in a very broad class of dynamics uh, of situations. So, yeah, this suggests that the, the proper divergence in the asymptotic limit is a KL divergence. So, Important assumption behind this is the ergodicity. So ergodicity is a key uh, assumption to get the KL divergence. And quantum ergodic theorem is always uh, almost equivalent to the quantum Stein theorem in uh, information theory. And finally, why catalyst? So catalyst enriches state compatibility. And also catalyst can be very huge. So the asymptotic theory is again relevant to the catalytic stage. Also, the sum dynamic allows uh, catalysts from the beginning in some sense. 
Okay, so this is uh, my last slide, and we have I have talked about uh, uh, quantum sum dynamics of interacting many body systems and the quantum sum dynamics of correlated catalytic state conversion at small scale. And yeah, uh, the uh, results are published in these three papers. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. All right, thank you very much. Uh... Now the floor is open for questions and comments. Um, okay, I have a question from the yeah. audience. Um, oh, yeah. um, I have a question for the second part. Do you consider the unitary time evolution of system and catalyst? If then an initial product state S cross C evolves into an entangled state and then returns to a product state S prime cross C. Is it consistent with the second law of thermodynamics? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, in the second part, so this state conversion is not necessarily unitary. It, it is in general given by a non-unitary version, especially mm -hmm. in the thermodynamics setup, it is given by the Gibbs preserving. So my answer is yeah this this is non unitary so that problem is yeah there's no problem during the consistency with the second order. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, heavily loaded with theorems and lemmas, <laughs> but it's still a very um, enjoyable talk. Yeah. Another question. Um, uh, could you please explain the difference between the catalyst and heat bath? Oh, yeah. It, the heat bath can be arbitrary. I mean, mm. okay. The most important uh, assumption about the catalyst is that the, at least its marginal state is the same between the initial and the final state. But in the case of heat bus, it can be different from the initial state. Mm -hmm. And another difference is that the initial state of the heat bus is uh, typically in the given state. But the initial state of, of the catalyst can be mm -hmm. in anything. Yeah, that, that's the difference. So catalyst is more artificial thing. The initial state is designed uh, in very noical state. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the final state should be all of the same as in Sharon, but the it was is in the given state in the initial state, and in the final state, it can be more chaotic. Mm. Okay. Um, all right. Um, yeah, while we are waiting for other questions, uh, uh, let me ask a small question. Uh, at the very early part of your talk, um, you mentioned resource theory of entanglement yeah. becomes similar to the resource theory of thermodynamics in the limit of T going to infinity. Yeah. So the population inversion does not require any work in, in that limit, right? So uh... how do you... So in, in yeah. finite temperature, yeah, the Gibbs state to become a non-equilibrium state, we yeah. pump in some some form of work, right? Mm, yeah. But at, at infinite temperature, uh, we don't need such work. Do I understand correctly? Oh, in, at infinite temperature, the Gibbs state is a completely mixed state. That's right. From the, for example, from completely mixed state to uh, this, for example, completely excited state, we uh -huh. still need some work. So, uh -huh. so th that's the reason why even at okay. infinite temperature we have some work. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe my misunderstanding. But, but I, I'm asking um, any intuitive explanation why the limit um, where t goes to infinity instead of uh, t go, go, goes to zero, um, oh. the two resource theory becomes similar. I see, yeah. Basic intuition is like that. 
let me write down something. So the bell state is, can you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, bell state is, sorry. This is the equation, yeah. okay. And okay. so this is a completely mixed state. And if we trace out one of the system, for example, the Alice's state, then the remaining state is given by the completely mixed state. One one. Sorry, that's very dirty, but yeah. But I can see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is the reason why uh, yeah. the entanglement state corresponds to the infinite temperature state. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, any other questions? Uh, one question. Yeah. I mean, this question is not well defined. If I see the second part, too, yeah. so, and suppose, I mean, let me consider very concrete example in the classical example so yeah. suppose uh, i'm considering some Nangyawang system and also mm -hmm. some katala the catalysis i mean some c whatever it is then can i write this i mean construction you know some pass integral way to see something some yeah sorry i could, could you so yeah this is not well defined question so i'm just translate this i mean you are construction density matrix construction into mm. some more I mean both I mean express direct way to me to my language. So if, mm. so if I consider some in the classical system if I consider some Langevang system and yeah. if I introduce some catalysis and evolution of the Langevang Brownian particle may you mm. may introduce some some memory corner whatever and then can I set uh, can I reformulate this in terms of passive figure and then, then yeah, I 제가 그저 기기 서비스를 좀 받으려고 하는데요. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, maybe this is not well defined. I'm just asking. So oh, sorry, could you say it again? So, uh, I so I want to reformulate this in terms of passive figure. Yeah. yeah. In terms of density matrix, I mean algebra way. Okay. So we in analytic just the expression in yeah, terms of pass integral. I mean, I can write down law yeah. in Schubin or Keldish, whatever, and C, I mean, yeah. into some audit so I can, some some generating functional formulation, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Then, so then I consider this process, law and law prime. Yeah. So then, then I want to have some yeah this kind of your state want to maybe derive i don't know man I, i'm and this is just reinterpret i mean so in terms of different languages that i i'm i I'm yeah. Familiar with. yeah so actually and mathematically this is uh, restricted to the final dimensional dimensional case but yeah, we can imagine that a similar thing is applied to infinite dimensional, I mean, momentum position, momentum situation. And yeah, we, we can apply some, some passive integral formulation, I think. In that, that case, uh, Gibbs preserving map is uh, kind of a solution. So for example, the Fokker Planck equation yeah. that yeah. has some, some uh pass integral uh, expression and catalyst is some additional system that is initially independent with the system and the gibbs preserving map is applied to the total system and the, in the final state uh, the only the marginal distribution of the catalyst returns to the initial one so mm -hmm. that yeah so okay, thank you we have a uh... We have a sequel question regarding the difference between the catalyst and the heat bath. Oh, okay. Uh, the question was, um, uh, they have no difference in terms of the physical size. Is that right? Oh, you mean? The catalyst versus the heat bath. Yeah, they are, I think they are very different. Yeah. So oh, because... very different in terms of the size. Uh, size. Okay. Uh, Yes, it's also very different. I mean, okay. Okay. yeah, so heat pass is basically some 
around it was so what what the, the, the catalyst can be very small or can be very huge it is also arbitrary so it it is completely artificial thing so we can if we want some small catalyst we can design some small one and if we need some huge one we can design the huge catalyst so yeah, actually this construction is very huge catalyst i see so I see. and heat bus is physically heat bus is given by some environment that is typically very huge i think all right um do we have any other questions or comments okay then uh, uh let's let's give the speaker a big hand um for his beautiful work and uh, uh speech today thank you very much professor Sagawa. thank you very much thank you very much and